John 12, 23. And this is Jesus predicting his death. Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. It's my prayer that we would be given not just the ability, but the desire to say, Jesus, spend my life for your glory. Pour me out as an offering. Every last drop. When I stand before the Heavenly Father, I want to be able to know that I did everything. I gave everything. I tried everything that I possibly could to bring Him glory. I want to leave no gift unused. No command unfulfilled. No assignment left undone. I want to be planted by the hand of God like a seed in the ground. Now the scripture says, and we just read it, that unless that seed is planted, it will remain alone. What is Jesus talking about? He's talking about the multiplication that comes from a seed that is planted into the ground. If I keep the seed and never plant it, it will never become a plant. And if it can never grow as a plant, it can never produce after its kind. I don't want to be a seed left unused. I don't want to be a life unplanted. Now, when God plants you in the ground, there will come a season of loneliness. Because in order to be planted, please remember this, in order to be planted as a seed by the hand of God, you must go to dark places. In order to be a seed in the ground, you must go to places you may not want to go. You must do some things that you may not want to do. See, I think that we have this misconception concerning the gospel. And I think that the misconception tells us that God will work everything around our desires. That God will work everything around our comfort. And we even have key words that we use in the body of Christ and we don't even realize what we're saying. I believe that God is the God of breakthrough. However, that word breakthrough has become a term in the church that we use to describe the day that we never have to struggle again. We use the word breakthrough to describe the day that we never have to be uncomfortable. People of God, the gospel is not about your dreams. It's about God's will.
Jesus did not shed his blood on that cross so that you could be comfortable. In fact, he said, you have to come after me. You have to follow me. You have to go along the path that I go along. And if Jesus, our Savior, Lord, and Master suffered, if he was persecuted, if he was hated, if he was rejected, why shouldn't we be? Now, I'll never forget when God first began to call me into the ministry. I've shared before about when I met the Holy Spirit as a person and how knowing the Holy Spirit as a person transformed my life. And it is that friendship with the Holy Spirit that really has resulted in everything that you see, at least on the outside. But you know, there's so much more to that. I remember during that season of my life when things weren't always 100% clear. I tell the good parts to inspire you and tell you of how the Holy Spirit can move. And, you know, you can't share your entire life story every time you share your testimony. And so I share the important parts. But, you know, I was terrified to go into ministry. In the first place, I didn't really think of myself as someone who had much talent. Me and my friends weren't considered... The in crowd, we were the outcasts, so to speak. And we would be made fun of for the way we looked, for the way we talked, for the way we dressed. And I think that's partially what helped me to form such a strong bond with the Holy Spirit is that in him I found a friendship and I could relate to him in that he knew what it was to be rejected. But I remember hearing Miss Catherine Coleman talk about the fact that she felt she had nothing to offer. And she would say to the Lord, Lord, if you can use nothing, here it is. And I remember hearing that statement and I thought, I think I'm in the same boat. I think we have the same starting point. And I know many of you feel the same way where you come to the Lord, you see what he's calling you to do. You see the need in the world and everything in you says, I don't think I'm qualified to do that. I don't think I have much to offer. We're like Moses, who's like, Lord, here are all my excuses as to why you can't use me. Imagine telling God that to his face. You can't use me because. Or Isaiah the prophet, who when he encountered God, saw heavenly visions. The train of God's robe filled the temple. Angelic beings were flying about. The temple shook to its foundation. What a wonderful sight, but he didn't look at that heavenly sight. What did Isaiah notice when God showed up? Himself. Woe is me, for I am undone. And I think that sometimes in the face of what God is calling us to do, we can come to that place where we say things like, I am undone. Or, Lord, surely you should choose another. Or, Lord, surely you don't mean me. So I remember being terrified of the call. Just all of these insecurities, just so many, constantly moving. Even when I would speak, I would, I would be, did I say that weird? Did I come across this way? I just constantly, constantly, it was a battle. And I remember one night just tossing and turning, tossing and turning. You ever have those nights where the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you wish he would just stop saying what he's saying? Don't look at me all religious and spiritual. You've been there. Because we're not always so cooperative of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And I remember I was tossing and turning because I just sensed it burning in my heart. The Holy Spirit saying, preach. 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 Preach the gospel. And I'm tossing and turning and I'm going, well, well, what if this is an impure motive? What if I'm just being, what if I'm just being self-centered? Well, how do I know this is really you? Well, well, what are people going to say? Aren't they going to think I'm arrogant? Or what if they make fun of the way I talk? What if they make fun of the way I do things? What if they make fun of the way I look? Well, do I really need to start right now? Isn't this something that can wait? And I remember there were several nights in a row where I just could not sleep. I would break out into sweats, wondering, Holy Spirit, is this you? 
So I said, okay, Holy Spirit, if this is you, I know you'll confirm it. So I go up to my youth pastor at the time. I'll never forget this. It was in the parking lot of, ch of a church service on a Wednesday night after church. I go into the parking lot. You guys know him, Eddie Vargas, Pastor Eddie Vargas. I go up to him. I say, can I talk to you for a second? He says, sure. I say, you know, I just been filling in my heart. I was prepared to tell this long story. Mind you, it's Wednesday night. I'm just got my list. I'm, 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 I, here's what I was expecting. I'm going to tell him my story. Then he's going to say, okay, here's some of the things we need to do to align this and so forth and so on. And mind you, I'd been serving in the church for a while. So I was expecting, you know, okay, in a few years, we'll pray about that and this and what I was expecting. I tell him, I've been up at night. This has been keeping me awake. I think this is the Holy Spirit. I feel like I need to preach the gospel. He says, okay, you're going to preach next Thursday. <laughs> My heart just sank. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, let's do this. So I started to put together my notes. I went, my dad is a pastor, so I took all his sermons and started looking at how he did his outlines. And I tried to recreate, even down to the highlight system. I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this highlight system. And I still remember the title of my first sermon. Our Relationship with God Almighty. It was a real fancy title. And I preached on King David and three of the more popular stories in his life. And I, to this day, don't really even remember much of what I talked about other than the fact that I talked about our relationship with God. And it wasn't delivered with eloquence. I didn't have the best presentation skills. All I remember is that same presence that I had known privately in my room for hours on end, year after year, when I began to preach that message, that same presence filled the atmosphere. And that's when I realized that when you live the crucified life, the Holy Spirit will help you to do it. I often pray before I get on the platform, Holy Spirit, if you don't go with me, I'm done. You imagine I get on this platform and the Holy Spirit wasn't with me. I could give you a nice sermon, but there's no replacing that tangible touch of his presence and power. Those people who drove nine hours, 14 hours to be here tonight, they didn't drive because they wanted to hear me preach. They could watch me preach on YouTube without having to drive nine to 14 hours. People of God, you came here tonight because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You came here because you're hungry for a move of God. And the message to you tonight is simple. It's time to surrender everything. No more games. No more compromises. The hour is calling for people who will be fully committed, not just fully committed, but completely crucified. Sometimes what we do is we place ourselves on the altar. We say, Lord, you can have me. And then moments later, we step right off. The crucified life is one of intimacy with God. Philippians 3.10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If you were promised a perfect life when you were saved, you were lied to. We hear so much preaching and how you're going to succeed, you're going to succeed, you're going to succeed. Oh, if you push a little further, you'll succeed. Why are we so focused on success? 
God has a wonderful plan for your life. Tell that to Stephen the martyr. Was that not God's wonderful plan for his life? When we picture the will of God, when we picture God giving us breakthrough, when we picture God finally moving in our lives, what in fact do we picture? Does everything God does through us and around us and for us benefit only us? Do we imagine that everything about the call of God will fit neatly into the plan that we've made for our own life? Do we imagine that there will never be a disruption, never be a call to sacrifice? And that's a question every believer should ask themselves. When was the last time I had to give something up to follow Jesus? No, really, when was the last time following Jesus cost you something? The promise of the gospel is not a perfect life. It's union with God. Yes, we are blessed, but we're not consumed by blessing. There will be some trouble. There will be trials. There will be persecution. But the promise is, in the middle of all of that, he will never leave you nor forsake you. There was a point in ministry where I had been preaching about four or five years. And then I hit this crossroads. Many of my friends were beginning to move on to careers, college, universities. And I remember coming to this crossroads in my life and calling everybody I knew to call. And, and, and I was asking them, is it possible to still do this, this, and this and preach the gospel? And Please understand, I'm sharing my testimony. This isn't the model for your life. In principle, I'm just talking about decisions. If God calls you to go to school, go do it. If he doesn't, then don't. It's just that simple. But here I had this crossroads. I wanted to pursue something. I knew I wanted to do something. I had this skill set that I wanted to apply and pursue something that would better me. And I began to realize that in order to pursue these things, I would have to begin cutting back on the ministry side. And I wrestled with that. And it wasn't just this, oh, okay, I'll, I guess I'll do this. No, 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 no. There was an intense emotional, mental wrestling within me. I remember I would go on long walks, like hour long walks. And then at the end of the walk, just sit down and just stare off at the city or the landscape, wherever I was, thinking and praying and talking to the Lord. And I realized that if I was going to pursue the call, I would have to lay down my hopes and dreams. We don't want to hear this kind of preaching. When we hear God has a wonderful plan for your life, we think it involves everything we ever wanted. And I had to give that up, but I can stand here today and tell you I'm so glad I did. Coming to that place of decision. What do I do? Because... In this world, on this side of eternity, you get one life. And you know, living for the Lord completely is demonstration that you actually believe in a heaven. If there's no heaven, I messed up. That's what Paul said. If Christ did not rise from the dead. We're the most miserable lot indeed. But he did. And there is hope beyond this world. There is an eternity for which we will live. Not everyone will be a preacher, but everyone will have a cross. What's your cross? What's God asking you to bear? I'm not talking about legalism. I'm 
not talking about religion or superstition. I'm talking about what the Holy Spirit is actually asking of you. What does the Holy Spirit require of you? Jesus said, if you try to cling to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life, then you gain it. A crossless gospel is a Christless gospel. What did Jesus pray when he was in the garden? Lord, if it's possible, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will. Your will be done. That's what God is looking for. His eyes are searching the earth right now, right now in this moment. And this moment in history is calling for people who will lay down their lives for the sake of the gospel. This moment is ours to seize. This moment has been given to us by God himself. What will you do with this moment that you've been given? What will you do with this life that he's gifted to you? What will you do with the gifts and the talents and the time that he has provided? What will you do with the breath that he gave you? I don't want to live for me. I don't want to live for money. I don't want to live for the world. I want to live for the gospel of Jesus Christ and I want to give my life for his glory. God is dropping heavenly mantles upon a generation. I don't know about you, I'm not going to miss my mantle. I'm not going to miss my mantle. I know what God has imparted to me. And I will protect that. Nothing is worth that precious anointing on your life. No compromise, no sin, no distraction. Nothing is worth that anointing on your life. The crucified life is a powerful life. The crucified life is a soul winning life. The crucified life is a life that glorifies God. His eyes are searching. Who will go for us? Who can I send? Who will go and tell the world that Jesus saves? Who will send those that will tell the world that Jesus saves? Who will lay down their life for the sake of the gospel? It's time that we crucify our laziness. It's time that we crucify our pride, our ego, that sense of competition, our fear, our doubts, our offense, our disobedience. It's time to put it on the cross and leave it on the cross. Don't let it off the cross again. Your flesh wants a resurrection. Don't give it one. The Bible says this in Galatians 5, verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. You know, you read of Enoch. The Bible says he walked with God and he was not, for God took him. When I read that, I said to the Lord, Lord, I want to be a was not too. When Moses ascended the mountain, the Bible says, and as he ascended the mountain, he disappeared into the cloud. 
Oh, God, let me disappear into the cloud. John 3.30 says, I must decrease, but he must increase. You know why John the Baptist said that? He said that because his ministry prophesying the coming of the Messiah was now taking a back seat since the Messiah had arrived. So people weren't coming to him to hear his teachings anymore. Not as many. John's crowds were dwindling. Jesus' crowds were growing. People's focus on John was shifting to their focus on Jesus. That's why he said, I must decrease. He must increase. When people look at you, do they see Jesus? Do they see the glorious image of the Son of God? God wants to use you. There is no limit to what God can do with a life surrendered to the Holy Spirit. There's no limit. Take those limitations off. It's not about how gifted you are about how surrendered you are. Even as I'm talking, I sense a great stirring in you. There are people of God with gifts and talents and abilities that if only we would lay down our lives. I don't want to build what God told me to crucify. What I'm describing is not an easy thing. There was a group of people came up after the service last night. And they asked me to pray for them. And they said to me, one of them, the first one who I prayed for, he said, I'm ready to pay the price. I'm ready to pay the price. You remember that? And I told him, do you even know what you're asking? He said, no, but I'll pay whatever the price is. And when we began to pray, the power of God came on them. When God calls you to pick up your cross, it's going to be something you don't want to give up. That's the thing about the cross. It's never what you like. But tonight, there's power waiting to be imparted upon people who will say, take all of me. Do you want that? Lift your hands, begin praying in the Holy Ghost right now. As I said, I want to pray for those who sense a call of God on their lives. I said this last night. The ministry is not just fivefold. I'm talking about the call. Everybody praying in the Holy Ghost all across the room. How about that song, You Are Worthy of It All? Let's just have the team play it for now. Is he worthy? Jesus. You watching online, ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart. Time to lay things down. Tonight's message was a simple one. Sometimes I teach. Sometimes I preach.
sometimes on nights like tonight, I just share. What I'm sharing with you is something you can experience, something you can have. Power from on high, power from on high. Power comes upon the surrender. Patrick, bring these two women right there. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Those two on the end, right there. Bring them here. I looked at them. I don't know who they are. I just looked at them, and I saw that I need to lay hands on them. Both of you lift your hands. Both of you lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, Father, let there be an anointing, an impartation from on high. Everybody praying in the Holy Ghost now. Come on. Ladies, what I want you to do is just say, Jesus, say, take it all. Now receive of that power. Receive of that power. Thank you, Jesus. I sense such a strong anointing here. Oof. Close your eyes. Receive his touch. That's the power of God here. Rest you, lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Tonight, you're here. You want God to use your life. You're ready to lay it all down, all of it. Come and kneel at these altars quickly now. They're open. The power of God is flowing. It's a moment of surrender. A moment of surrender. Kondo Robobo said Ted Yedere Jesus, we honor you. If you have to kneel in the aisles, just kneel in the aisles, that's okay. Just as long as you're responding, just as long as you're responding. Konto Robobobo Sente. Kende Rebebebebe Santo Robobo Sente. Church, it's time. Lift your voices. The power of God is here. Leave it at the altar. This is a moment of repentance. This is a moment of purity. He's purifying the people. Lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. Jesus, you can have it. Jesus, you can have it. You in your homes. Lay it all down. You in your homes, you get on your faces before God in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are. Canto robo bo senteri and de robo bo sente. Canto robo bo sente.
Every voice lift it now. Give it all to Jesus as we worship him. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. and sing it. Make it your prayer tonight, church. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing it out, church. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Holy Spirit, these are lives laid down, a little softer on the keys, a little softer. These are lives laid down, Lord. You know, as you kneel here before the Lord, there are many of you who are dealing with insecurities. There's a gentle flow of the Spirit now. You're filled with insecurities about who you are. Many of you about the things you've done. You wonder, can God use me? You know, He just wants one thing. I love you, Lord. And 
I lift my voice It's all he wants To worship you Oh my soul Rejoice Take joy my King In what you hear And let it be a sweet, sweet sound In your ear It's all he wants, church Forget about everything else now as we softly sing I love you, Lord And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. A sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Just give it to him. Would you just tell him that you love him? Just tell him that you love him. He just wants your love. He'll take care of the rest, I promise you. He will take care of the rest, I promise you. He just wants your love. And those who love him, obey him. Just give him your love. Lift your voices and just begin to tell him that you love him. Tell him that you love him. He'll take it from there. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. He'll take it from there. Bring this guy here. Everybody keep praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep, keep ministering to the Lord. Keep ministering to the Lord. He just wants your love. 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 That's your friend. That guy with the polo shirt on. Bring him here. I love you, Lord. Now play it with me ish. I know I'm a little all over the place. I'm just worshiping right now. And I lift my voice. Oh, wow. To worship you. Oh, my soul. Lord, I rejoice. I just want one thing, Lord, that you would take joy, my King. I used to sing this to the Lord when I was like 12 and 13. Sometimes you forget about the older songs. Wow. These are lives laid down. Sweet, sweet sound. In your ear. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, name above all names. Oh, just love him right now, church. Don't worry about a thing. Just love the Lord. Name above all names. 
beautiful Savior. Bring him here. You want God to use you? Lift your hands. Father, let him receive of that touch now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Bring that girl up here. Name above all names. Beautiful Savior. That's the power of God. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. Emmanuel. What a beautiful moment in his presence. What a beautiful moment in his presence. wait just wait ask him to use you church ask him to use your life We're just waiting on him now, just waiting on him, just waiting on him. your hands and say this. Say, Jesus, spend me, spend my life for your glory. Just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. I know it's overwhelming. It can feel so overwhelming at times, but just, just a moment. Right now, it's a different flow. Many of you are feeling the power of God in ways you've never felt Him before. Bring this woman up. Jesus. Lord, let her receive of your touch. That's the presence of Jesus. That's the presence of Jesus. You know, my my team will play, Steve and them will do these worship songs, these classics we call them, because these were the songs that marked my life. And, and they bring me back to a certain place. Thank you, Jesus. Bring this guy up here. Jesus, we honor you. Right here your hands. Father, let there be fire from heaven that comes upon him. Let there be fire from heaven that comes upon him in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. 
Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.